Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala mawuthi rahmatin lil'alamin nabiyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Amma ba'd, al-yawm thalatha min shahri Rajab, alfa urbawmiya wa ithnan wa urbaun, al-muafiq li, li kam, al-muafiq li khamsa ashar min shahri February, alfayn wa wahid wa ishirin. نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء أسر الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فيما نتعلمه ويرفع درجة المؤلف في علميين وأن يزيدنا علما وفقها وتقوى وإخلاصا. Last week we we were talking about the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the dream he saw and we talk about the the first thing he saw in that dream. Where they, they, they pass through a person who is punished uh, by having another person throwing a rock on his head. And also, uh, we pass uh, uh, through a place where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about those group of brothers and sisters who are punished and they were naked in, inside that uh, part. And we also pass a place where, uh, you know, I guess we stopped uh, there. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Fantalakna fa'atayna ala nahrin. حسبت أنه كان يقول أحمر مثل الدم وإذا في النهر سابح يسبح وإذا على شط النهر رجل قد جمع عنده حجارة كثيرة وإذا ذلك السابح يسبح ما يسبح ثم يأتي ذلك الذي جمع عنده الحجارة فيفغر له فاه فيلقمه حجرا فينطلق فيسبح ثم يرجع إليه كلما رجع إليه فغر له فاه فألقاه حجرا فقلت له ما ما هذان قال لي انطلق انطلق. He said we came across a pe a I mean two people and there is there was a river next to them and inside that river one of them is swimming inside and at the 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 bank of the river the other one is standing there. So the one who is standing at the side of the river the shore. He has in front of him a group of rocks and pebbles, small ones, that can fit the mouth of a person. And these uh, pebbles, they are, are taken from hell. Because in another, in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that they are taken from hell. And that they are, they are, they are completely red, which shows that they are taken from, from fire. This water, this river, is red, you know, is like a, a blood river, you know, a river of blood. So, uh, so, so, so the one who is swimming in it will keep coming towards the one who is standing at the side of the river. And then when he approaches him, he reaches a place where he is uh, very close to him, in a close range. And the one who is next to the, the river will pick up one of those pebbles and he will be ready for the one, that one to, to come uh, near him so that he can throw it on him. And when the one who is swimming, you know, the swimmer, when he reaches him, he will open his mouth. And يَفْغَرُ فَاهُ يَعْنِ يَفْتَحُ فَمَهُ So he will open his mouth for this person. When he opens his mouth, and this one will take the pebble and throw it inside. And you can see the person being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that rock. You know, he will be suffering, he will be suffering, he will be suffering. And then at the end of the day, after he finished the suffering, he will come back to the one who is at the side of, of, the, of, the, rock, of the sea so that he will throw the thing again on him. So this had been taking place in the, in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was watching and those two brothers who picked him up, they are also watching. You know, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, ma hadha, what is this? You know, he told them, what is this? Ma hadhani, who are these two people? They told him, let's move uh, forward. Uh, you don't ask any question. You know, so they asked the Prophet Sallallahu to move. قَالَ فَانْتَلَقْنَا فَأَتَيْنَا عَلَى رَجُلٍ كَرِيهَ الْمِرْآةِ أَوْ كَأَكْرَهِ مَا أَنْتَ رَأِنْ رَجُلًا مَرْآن وَإِذَا هُوَ عِنْدَهُ نَارٌ يَحُشُّهَا وَيَسْعَى حَوْلَهَا قُلْتُ قَالَ قُلْتُ لَهُ مَا مَا هَذَا قَالَ لِي انطلق انطلق so I, we came across a man. He says, Kariha al mir'ah. You know, the worst type of look that you can see in your life is that one. You know, the look is not good. That is no mercy on his face at all. 
that is no mercy on his face at all. So they, they reached this person and also in front of him there was a fire, you know, and they found him, you know, and you he's, he's uh, um, increasing the temperature and the heat of this fire. I mean, preparing the, the fire, making it stronger and stronger. So uh, they met this person who is really in a, in a bad looking and uh, in front of him, that is the fire. He's making this fire. Where's our And he's going around the fire, you know, to make sure that it remains intact. So I told them, who is this? They told me, let's go. No question. And we left until the time we approach Rawdah. Rawdah is, uh, is a garden. You know, Mu'attama, it means, which is uh, full of, you know, uh, things of enjoyment. You know, uh, a lot of nabat in it. There are a lot of uh, plants, you know, flowers, you know, things that are making it, uh, making something very nice. That's why he says, Fiha min kulli rabia. You know, everything that will make a heart, you know, satisfied of the manadir, you know, uh, the very excellent and good looking garden. He said, we came across this. And then, uh, And then we found inside the, the garden, there was a man who was quite tall, very tall. لا أكاد أرى رأسه طولا في السماء. The Prophet Allah said, "It wasn't easy for me to see his head. You know, it was quite tall. You know." وإذا حول الرجل من أكثر ولدان رأيتهم قط. And then I saw in front of uh, this man or surrounding the man. You know, he says a lot of kids. You know, a lot of kids. He said, "This is a, the greatest amount of kids that I ever saw in my life." You know, kids gathered in one place. He said, I saw this, uh, this man being surrounded by so many kids, you know, children, a lot of children in, in, his, in front of him. So I told them, who is this? And who are these? So they told me, just go, move. فَانْتَلَقْنَا فَانْتَهَيْنَا إِلَىٰ رَوْضَةٍ عَظِيمَةٍ لَمْ أَرَىٰ رَوْضَةً قَدْتُ أَعْظَمَ مِنْهَا وَلَا أَحْسَنْ قَالَ لِي uh, we went to another garden. He said, I have never seen and I have never witnessed or heard of a garden like this. You know, subhanAllah. It was so, it was so excellent, you know, so excellent. And then when we reached that place, they told me, climb, uh, go up, you know, climb it, you know, go up uh, on top of it. فَرْتَقَيْنَا فِيهَا إِلَىٰ مَدِينَةٍ مَبْنِيَةٍ بِلَابِنِ ذَهَبٍ وَلَابِنِ فِضَّةٍ and so we, we climb on top of it until the time we reach uh, a city, you know, we reach a city. This city was built by gold and silver, you know, uh, the bricks, you know, one brick is gold and the other one is silver. We reach the door of that city and we, uh, they asked for permission to get in. Uh, the door was open for them. Very interesting dream, you know. So we get inside. He said, we got inside. Uh, and so we were uh, received by a group of people. They came to us. Right after we get in, a group of people, they came to us. We saw a group of people inside it. And these people, half of them is as good as you can see very excellent in terms of looking and the other half is very ugly you know the most ugliest thing you can see is that one half of them is good and the other half is is ugly so these two brothers they told the, the, the those group of men who are having this kind of nature so they told them so they told them go to that uh, that uh, river and get inside and wash yourself from it قَالَ فَإِذَا نَهَرٌ مُعْتَرِضٌ يَجْرِي كَأَنَّمَا أُهُ الْمَحْضُ فِي الْبَيْعَاضِ فَذَهَبُوا فَوَقَعُوا فِيهِ ثُمَّ رَجَعُوا إِلَيْنَا وَقَدْ ذَهَبَ ذَلِكَ السُّوءُ عَنْهُمْ So he says, 
uh, they told them, go and swim in that, in that river. So I was looking to see where's the river, you know. So I saw that, uh, uh, that there was a river which is uh, crossing uh, the way. Uh, so when they told them to go and swim in that, in, that, in that river, so I saw a river, it's like crossing the road. Uh, so they told them, go and uh, swim in it. So they went and I saw the river it was so excellent, so pure, you know, so pure and clear. It was white, 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 white. That's why he says al mahdu al mahdu means very clear. Al-Khalis, 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 min al-Bayad. So, uh, and uh, it looks like, you know, it is, it, when you see it, you see, you, 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 it will looks like you're looking at, uh, at, 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 at the milk, the pure and clean and clear one. The milk that is not mixed with anything. Really, really white. So they told them, go and swim in that river. So they went and they get inside the river and they came out of it and all that which they used to suffer from has been taken away from them. So that deficiency they have was taken after they washed themselves from the river. So they told the Prophet this Jannah that you see, this is Jannah to Adin. And they show the Prophet Sallallahu In another place, they show him up, you know, on top of this, in a house, which is so beautiful. The Prophet Sallallahu has said, I have never seen something like this. So beautiful. And they told him, this is your house. So the Prophet Sallallahu uh, said, قَالَ فَسَمَا بَصَرِي سُعُودًا فَإِذَا قَصْرٌ مِثْلُ الرَّبَابَةِ الْبَيْضَاءَ قال قال لي هذا منزلك فقلت لهما بارك الله فيكما فذراني فأدخله قال أما الآن فلا وأنت داخله So he says uh, when they told me this is your house they point up they said this is your house the prophet الله عليه وسلم said فصعد بصري سعدا I look up to see where is my house you know So when I I look up he says uh, 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 so then, so I look, I look uh, up, you know, فَإِذَا قَصْرٌ مِثْلُ الرَّبَابَ So I saw a, 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 a castle that looks like a cloud, very beautiful clouds. SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. So I saw this house, you know, so excellent. He says it's just like a very beautiful cloud. And they told him, this is your house. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that's fine. But let me go in, inside my house since it is mine, you know. They told him, Ammal anafala. As for now, no. Because you are still alive. This is his house in Jannah and he's not dead yet. They told him, Ammal anafala. Fantadakhiluhu. But you will definitely get inside. But not now. Qala qultu lahuma inni qad ra'itu. In some narration, they told him, uh, Okay, see you next. He said, What do you mean by that? You have shown me a lot, and now you are just leaving like this. He said, no, I don't agree. You have to tell me what exactly I saw through this journey. So he said, you have to tell me what exactly I saw through uh, the journey. So they, uh, they, 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 they told him, قُلْتُ لَهُمَا فَإِنِّي قَدْ رَأَيْتُ مُنْذُ اللَّيْلَةَ عَجَبَا فَمَا هَذَا الَّذِي رَأَيْتُ he told them that I have seen a lot of things, you know, a lot of amazing things. What was the thing that you guys have showed me? <laughs> so they told him, uh, we are going to tell you, uh, we are going to tell you, inshallah, don't worry. أما الرجل الأول الذي أتيت عليه يثلغ رأسه بالحجر فإنه رجل الذي يأخذ القرآن فيرفضه وينام عن صلاة المكتوبة عن الصلاة المكتوبة. He said as for the first person that you saw, the one that they 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 are crushing his head with a rock. And this is a person that Allah subhanahu wa taala blessed with the Quran, but unfortunately he neglected it. You know he has two problems actually. One of them is being negligent. He has the Quran but he neglected it. And also at the same time, Yanam Salat al He sleeps neglecting the prayers. 
He delays the prayers. He knows that the prayer is coming very soon, but he slept. And then he missed the prayer. So that means this person is missing the prayer. That was his punishment. You know, subhanAllah. Imagine a person who is going to be punished in the grave like this until the day of judgment. How long is he going to live in the grave? Allahu A'lam. But imagine a punishment like that until the day of judgment. He will be receiving a punishment until the last day. Waliyazu billah. So, memorization of the Quran is one of the best things a person could do. You know, I, I heard last time somebody was uh, saying that it's not that much important. I don't know where is he taking his instruction from. Uh, that's uh, totally against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and against the attitude of the Salaf Salah. He said that what is uh, more important is just uh, to read and understand. Yes, both of them are important. But the Quran has been preserved through that memorization. And Allah prays it. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prays it. And those people who memorize the Quran and put it into practice and action, they have special place on the Day of Judgment with Allah. So, uh, memorization of Quran is excellent and a virtue from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala towards a human humankind, a Muslim. So, when you memorize it, you keep it. You put it into practice and action, and you revise it, not let it go. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked us to revise it because it is very quick in terms of running away from a person who doesn't revise it. If you revise it, even if it is a little, as long as you're consistent in your revision and you're committed to that which you're revising, even light Allah, it will never be taken away from, from you, inshallah. So forgetting Quran, if that is a justification for that, is not a sinful act. But if a person intentionally forget that which Allah SWT granted him, many scholars said he might be in trouble on the day of judgment because of that when it happens intentionally. But when a person has his cues, you know, in which he couldn't uh, keep it, you know, the Quran was taken away from him, even like Allah, he would not get into trouble on the Day of Judgment. There is a hadith that talk about this, but that hadith is weak, so we don't use it in this regard. As for the prayers, neglecting the prayer, already, you already know, you already know how bad it is. So one of the punishment that this person is going to be receiving in the grave is this punishment mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. قال وأما الرجل الذي أتيت عليه يشرشر شدقه إلى قفاه ومن ومن خره إلى قفا وعينه إلى قفا فإنه الرجل يغدو من بيته فيكذب الكذبة تبلغ الأفاق. And the person that they were cutting him, his mouth, his nose, his eyes, you know, all to the back, you know, to the back, to the mouth, to the back. And this person, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was told by these two brothers that this is the one that goes out of his house and go and lie to others. The lying that will go everywhere. So do we have something similar to this, you know? You have these messages which are sent by people through the social media. And they lie, you know, and a person will send them, you know reach every place. Somebody has to come and confirm that this is not true, this is fake, and this is this and that. So lying has never been tolerated Islamically. One of the punishment that a liar receives after the punishment in this dunya is that when he goes to the grave, he will be treated in that way. SubhanAllah, he will be treated in that way. Think about this, you know. So that's why, as I always mention, the best hadith for us to apply is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yaqul khayran aw yasmut. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter, you should always speak good or, or keep quiet. Wa amma al-rijalu wa al-nisa al-urat al-ladhina fi mithli abbina it-tannur. Fa innahum al-zunat wa al-zawani. As for the brothers and sisters you found, uh, naked, you know, being placed in that part and punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that kind of fire, you know, and they were screaming, they were yelling, and the oil is coming out of their body, you know, subhanAllah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was told that these are the people who are committing zina. And look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing them. Because zina, and a sexual relationship when somebody observe it and enjoy, everything in his body is enjoying. Almost every part of the body is enjoying. So that's the reason why jaza means al-amal, you know. Even in the punishment in this dunya for somebody who already married, they throw stone on him. Every part of the body should pay the price. SubhanAllah. And just imagine this, you know. How long does it take for somebody to satisfy his desire? 
from the time that the, 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 the discharge process is taking place, you know, how long does it take? Few seconds, few moments, you know, few minutes, you know, even if it is an hour, but it caused the person, you know, it caused the person to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ages in this life to lose his life in a very harsh way, you know, he will be stoned till death, you know, subhanAllah. And when he goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he did not repent, then what is waiting for him there might be greater, you know. And the enjoyment is, is for how long? Very little. So that you will understand the, the, pay, the, the, the importance of patience. He Allah, it is always important for a person to be patient with the halal, not to go with the haram, just exercise and maximize your patience. You know, just like the medicine, you know, sometimes you don't like it, but you know, it's so painful to do it, you know. You have a problem, they have to remove that problem on you. It's really not easy for you to sustain. But after that, you succeed. If you do not uh, tackle the problem correctly, what happens is that you remain in pain for ages, maybe throughout your life. So when it comes to righteousness, a person should observe the patience and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient. Because uh, going against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings nothing. Although you might enjoy it in the dunya, you might enjoy it physically. But what replaces that enjoyment is tragedy. So zina is rejected in all of its forms and the door to zina is blocked. You know, is blocked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do have to block it. And nowadays a lot of questions have been made. You know, people have been asking a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And they will keep on asking until... I, maybe the last day, they will keep on asking. About people exposing himself, uh, themselves. Uh, the girls exposing themselves in and, and a place in the public speaking where the brothers and sisters, the, everyone is watching. Is that okay? Many questions nowadays. Many, many, many questions have been uh, cast on, on us. How to deal with this? You know, I have nothing to say concerning this matter except to leave all of us with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then a person should be uh, logically thinking, if it is okay for me to do that, you know, and okay for a sister to go and portray themselves in the place where all the brothers will be looking at her, you know, uh, uh, and is that, is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? You know, does it go with the ayah or it is against the logic? Forget about Ibrahim's opinion, Karim's opinion, Fadila opinion, uh, Karima's opinion. Look into the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just uh, work within it. And everyone should remember that on the day of judgment, we will be held responsible alone, you know, alone. Allah will never call you and tell you, did you follow Ibrahim or Karim or Bashir or Karima, you know, Fadila, you know. Allah will never ask you about this, you know. But he will ask you about how much you follow the Quran and how much you follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is an exercise patience, you know, every single thing that can lead to zina, let us block it. Our sisters have been in trouble and many of them have been in trouble and they are still in trouble. And most of these trouble that they found themselves in was simply because of the way they dress or the places where they're going or the way they advertise themselves, you know. And marriages have been gone, you know, because of this uh, simple attitude, you know. Why is this so, so... So interesting. If that is any way for you to send the messages, you know, for everyone to understand, why do you come and show yourself? You know, <laughs> why is it? Why is it fancy? Sometimes some of, some of these, these things, you know, I'll be surprised. Why does somebody see it as something fancy? You know, why, why, why? You know, if not because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves it, you know, it's good for you to stay home and sleep. You know, don't come and and, and talk. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves it. And he created us as somebody who forgets. So as long as there is somebody who can do the job for you, and there is a question mark upon you doing it, if you're going to do it directly in the way you're doing it, why do you go and put yourself into trouble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The manhaj of the Salafus Salih, and the way uh, those used to teach in the past is already documented for us. So as I said, I always invite us to refer to the life of the Salafus Salih. Then refer to me, Karim Bashir. No, refer to the life of the Salaf al Saleh. See the way they used to live. Those who are the closest people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be idhn Allah ta'ala and follow them. When you want to succeed, follow the statement of Abdullah Masood, alayka bil atik. Follow the old one, meaning the attitude and the manners and the manhaj of the companions of the Prophet, which they took from 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Everyone knows his position, and everyone is trying to please Allah subhanahu wa taala. Nobody was looking for a fame, you know, how to be mashhur. They don't care about that. They don't care about that. And actually, they try to push others to go and talk on their on their behalf. But nowadays, Shaitan sawwala lan al amra. We started to think that this is so fancy. You will be, uh, you all, you can only be somebody, you know, if you put yourself into that nature. So anything that can lead to zina, we should block it. And I'm advising our sisters first, before our brothers, preserve your honor and dignity, maintain your shyness, and that beauty that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala granted you is a blessing. Wallahi is a blessing. I mean, make sure that you conceal it and keep it in the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala kept it for you, for your own benefit. Don't you ever expose yourself that much to those people who might be uh, showing you good faces, but they're criminal from, from inside. Be very careful. Islam knows exactly what it does. Allah SWT, when he uh, prescribed the hijab, he did, he did it for wisdom. Going against this hijab brings nothing to the sisters except tragedy. <coughs> I focus on them because they are the ones who get harmed more than, more than anybody else. And uh, there is something which I found to be natural. That if a sister is protecting herself and preserving her honor and dignity, that doesn't expose herself that much, the brothers are scared of her. You know. The top, uh, uh, the top uh, gangster, when he meets her, he will bow. Allah said, adna an yu'rafna fala yu'dayn. But it has a secret, you know. Iman is behind that. As long as she believes in Allah's matter correctly and she guard and protect her modesty, with Allah Ta'ala, the community is going to be protected. But when she opens the door, Allah, to my knowledge, and the only if she opens the door, then the criminals can be able to, to step in. If she doesn't, it will remain locked. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth and let us understand this fact and it correctly. People think that we are too much conservative. But conservativeness in this time of ours, I think, is always excellent. Because many people cry. We have seen that. Many people cry and regret it. Many people. And they are still regret it. And before they used to see us, they used to see others, you know, who were trying to be good, you know. All of us, we are trying to be good. And to see the way Allah SWT will accept it, will accept us with the little we are doing. But people used to think that life is very boring, you know. Somebody, was, somebody told me that your life is so boring, you know. And subhanAllah, miskeen, I see him, I see the sign of, you know, uh, depression on his face, you know. And nowadays, this type of people, in particular this one, subhanAllah, very sympathetic, you know, situation. Pathetic, you know, situation when you see him, you know, like that. But unfortunately, he's an, uh, there in that likeness, they used to see you and talk to you about your life is very boring. Why? Because you neglected a lot of entertainment. So they follow the entertainment and they lost the consciousness. They lost their consciousness and they lost the comfort in life. And the people who try to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't say we're doing, but we're trying to follow. We're trying to follow. We're trying to follow to see how we can reach that. But alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. So stick with the, the correct manhaj and the, the approach of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, you will enjoy life. Wallahi, uqsimu lakum billah, you will enjoy life. And Allah SWT is going to make you com feel comfortable. He's in light ta'ala. It depends on your iman. Do you accept it or you're testing Allah SWT ta'ala? So back to the issue of the zina. So sisters, let us uh, uh, practice it. The brothers also, let us all uh, uh, coordinate and cooperate to make sure that the law of Allah SWT, especially in this regard, is being preserved properly. Respect should be maintained between brothers and the sisters, but that barrier placed by Allah SWT has to be maintained. Removing it brings nothing except issues. Even in the communities, you know, the communities, some communities, they do, they seem to be accepting it, but in reality, in secret, they go and complain to others. My wife is doing this, my wife is doing this. Uh, a lot, a lot. A person will be open, but in secret, he doesn't know what to do. Keep on complaining, and at the end of the day, these type of marriages end in divorce. And what is the grounds for the divorce? That exposure that the family has. So whatever is not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never bring good to the family. So I really advise us to be patient and practice Islam correctly. 
عليه يسبح في النهر ويلقم الحجارة فإنه آكل الربا It says that as for the one who is in the river, the river of blood, and this is the one that is taking riba. Subhanallah. This person, you know, I don't know how many punishment he has, you know. The one who is taking riba, I don't know how many punishment this guy has. And up to date, we're very light, you know, very light. Riba, riba becomes so simple nowadays, you know. And we have a lot of, I mean, so-called scholars, you know, and Sharia advisors who will be uh, not having shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also thinking of their dunya. They use the face of Islam and exploit and suck the blood of people in, in secret. So I will not dwell on riba because everyone knows and we talk about this so many times. As for the man who is having the bad looking, you know, in the nar next to the fire, يَحُشُّهَا وَيَسْعَ حَوْلَهَا فَإِنَّهُ مَالِكٌ خَازِنُ جَهَنَّمُ SubhanAllah So this is Malik, the one who you found next to the fire, this is Malik, the one who is taking care of Jahannam. You can see the way he looks. What message we learn from this, you know, that try as much as you can not to be sent to him. Because the Rasulullah SAW did not see any sign of mercy with him. And look at the statement of, uh, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah to uh, Zukhruf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكُ وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكُ They will be calling upon Malik, you know, the angel who is taking care of hell. They will be calling him, لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكُ Please do ask Allah to take our life. We just want to die. We won't live in this place. We want death, you know. Who is looking for death? They will be looking for death. Please, Malik, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take our life. They cannot bear it anymore. Allah says, كُلَّمَا نَوْذِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّنَّاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوكُ الْعَذَابُ So they will be asking, Malik, please intercede for us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take our life. Khalas, we just want to go, you know. And some scholars of Tafsir said, they will be asking, they will be screaming, they will be fighting for this. And subhanAllah, after after one uh, after 40 years, some said, some of the first students said, Malik will never talk to them. They will keep on screaming after 40 years of uh, and negligent, meaning, meaning he will neglect them for 40 years. 40 years, they will be neglected. You know. 40 years. And these 40 years, if it is in accordance to the way Allah SWT calculate things, when Naomi and Rabbika ka alfi salatim mimma ta'udun, one year with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one year is, is equivalent to 1,000 years, according to our calculation. Even we, uh, we can just leave it according to our hisab. You know, 40 years, 40 years, you know, that's too much. They will be questioning, they will be screaming, they will be asking. After 40 years, then Malik will reply them. And what was the reply? In relation to what we're discussing here, he says, Innakum makithun. Subhanallah. قال إنكم ماكثون لقد جئناكم بالحق ولكن أكثركم للحق كارهون. Malik will tell them إنكم ماكثون. You're going to stay here forever. And the scholars said, if I mean, if had they keep quiet, that would have uh, would have been better for them actually to keep quiet because they will still have the expectation and the assumption of them, them going out of hell one day. They will keep on, they might be believing that a day will come, they will be going out of hell. But now when they ask Malik, and Malik told them after 40 years, you're going to remain here forever. That means all of the hope they used to have, now they are all cut off. No more hope of going out of it. No more hope of going out of hell. So they said this is more painful than the punishment they were in, than the situation they were in before. So that's why I said, my dear brothers and sisters, let us make sure that we don't have transit in this place. And let us make sure that we do not visit Malik, except like we'll see him you know, from far distance, but not been visiting him as somebody who is taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him as a criminal. E Allah, this is what a Muslim should do. And why were they in hell? You know, Malik told them, لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ جِئْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ 
ولكن أكثركم للحق كارهون. We sent you the truth. We came to you with the truth. But unfortunately, the vast majority among you, they hate nothing but the truth. They hate the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to see somebody talking about the truth. But now they see the reality. Their regret and the regret will never, will never benefit them. No U-turn when a person reached the day of judgment. No more U-turn. Now you can reflect. Now you can go back. Now you can fix yourself. Now you can make tawbah. But when a person reaches the day of judgment, there will be no U-turn at all. So brothers and sisters, this is the, the nature of the grave for the criminals and the bad ones. This is what is going on. SubhanAllah. So that place which you see, you know, I know some of us might think that this is a place of rest. You know, we talk about rest, rest, rest. No rest, except if a person put the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into practice and in action. And he told him that, I suppose that the tall person that you find in the, in the garden, that was Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah Akbar. So now you know some of the features of Ibrahim. It looks like the Prophet and he was, he's quite tall. Although the Prophet is mutawasit, you know, moderate, medium, and Ibrahim is very tall. And As for those people who are uh, the children that you found next to Ibrahim, and these are the children of the Muslims who died before the age of maturity. In some narration, the Prophet said, Wilid al Fitra, born upon the Fitra. Al Fitra here in Islam. Islam. Wilid al Fitra, or he was born upon the Fitra. Or Mat al Fitra died upon the Fitra. I mean, died as in a state of childhood upon the fitra without changing his religion as mean before the age of maturity qala ba'd al muslimin ya rasulullah wa awlad al mushrikin fa qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa awlad al mushrikin one of the believers said ya rasulullah and this will include the the, the children of the mushrikin they said uh, he said yes uh, inclusive uh, the children of the mushrikin it will include the children of mushrikin they will also get the same blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they die before the age of maturity, they will be going to, to paradise. On this matter, you have four opinions amongst the opinions of the scholars. These are the main opinions. An opinion that says concerning the children of the believers, uh, I'm sorry, the children of the non-believers. And uh, first of all, uh, children when they die before the age of maturity, if the parents are Muslims, these children, they will go to paradise. By consensus of the scholars, you know, except an insignificant, you know, controversy amongst uh, the scholars. I forgot the one who went, but no, you mentioned that the, the controversy concerning this matter is very insignificant. That the children of the believers, when they die, they will be going to paradise. But the question is about the children of the non-believers. The scholars differ here. You have an opinion that says they will be like the children of the believers. You have another opinion that says they will, Allah knows what they will be doing. You have another opinion that says hum And you have the last opinion that says they will be questioned. They will be tested on the day of judgment. And most likely this is the best opinion, the last one. The one that says they will be tested on the day of judgment. And this is because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that says, "Yahtaj yom al qiyamati arba'ah." He said, four people will come to Allah subhanahu wa taala on the day of judgment and protest. Four people will be protesting on the day of judgment. Uh, the first one is the majnoon. Al Ahmaq, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he would say, "Ya Allah, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came, the kids are throwing a poop, akramakum Allah, of an animal, the dung of an animal." The camel on me. In some narration, they are throwing stone on me, Ya Rasulullah, because of Janun. And uh, the second one is a Shaykh al Harim, an old man that reached the age of senile, lost the control. He doesn't know what is, I mean, his consciousness is technically gone. He's not Majnoon, 
but at the same time that the the, the 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 mental capacity is not that good in the way he doesn't recognize what is going on so he will say ya rasulullah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and i can't even hold things you know rasulullah i don't know what is going on exactly and the la, the, the next one is sahibu fatra somebody who did not meet rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he missed isa alaihi salam and he did not he died before the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the period where the, the religion is corrupted so he couldn't get the correct and the true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last one is uh, the child the boy below the age of maturity will say ya Allah I don't know I was very young I don't even understand things ya Allah so all of them will be protesting saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are to be punished on what basis are we going to be punished and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them okay if i am to ask you to do something would you do it they will say yes definitely we will do it are you going to obey yes definitely we will obey we will never disobey and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say okay if you obey you will go to paradise you know very straightforward if you obey you will be taken to paradise if you disobey you will be taken to hell if you disobey you will be taken to to hell so and then Allah subhanahu wa subhan they will say yes we agree because they have seen the reality now Allah says wa ma kunna mu'adhibin hatta nab'atha rasula we will never punish a person without sending a message to them so these people they haven't received the mess any message either they don't understand the message or in the case of somebody who did not receive the message and this is not just applicable to those who miss Isa and miss Rasulullah it is also applicable to anyone in our time who never heard of Islam at all as for the one who heard about the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam nothing saves him except Islam he has to accept Islam this one has to accept Islam so uh, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah will send them a messenger and this messenger will tell them Allah is commanding you to go to hell you know they will be going on the way some of them when they see the hell they will say ya Allah why and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them okay those who uh, did not go you know those who did not go they have to proceed and go to hell and those who proceeded they should come back and go to paradise and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, he saw by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if they manage to get inside that fire they will find it not fire actually it's paradise being covered by the pictures of of hell it looks like hell but it is not so subhanallah they lost because of their their questions if they don't ask and they just follow you know the instruction in the way they promise also that they will be obeying that will be good for them and they will be in paradise but unfortunately because of questioning they lost everything and they have to be taken to to hell where nobody will be happy with that wali azza billah so that's uh, uh that's the best opinion according to uh, the, the, uh, the, the scholars that is the best opinion inshallah the one that says that the children of the mushrikeen who died before the age of maturity they will be tested on the day of judgment if they pass the test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them to paradise if they fail then they will be going to hell based on justice because on the day of judgment they have the aql and the consciousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test their, their, their truthfulness whether they will follow or not so aulad al muslimin they will be whoever died below the age of maturity they will be going to paradise automatically but before then they will be in that uh, place of transit you know being taken to the madrasa of ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim will be taking care of them uh, they were there next to ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam although it's so painful to lose one of your children but knowing this also will give you some comfort وَأَمَّا الْقَوْمُ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا شَطْرًا مِنْهُمْ حَسَنًا وَشَطْرًا مِنْهُمْ قَبِيحًا فَإِنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ خَالَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا فَتَجَاوَزَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ As for those people who half of them is good and half the other half is bad these are the people who mix you know uh, mess up things in this life uh, some part of their deed is good and the other part is is bad so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat them in that, in that way when they come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment half of them is good and the other half is is bad so you can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them at the end of the day and and took them to to paradise and most likely these are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss in surah al-araf 
uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in the place which is called Araf, but later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave their sins. So most likely these are the people, because Araf is between Jannah and Hell. These are the people who uh, uh, committed sin and they committed also good deed. So they have the balance. Uh, it's like you can say that they have 10 good deeds, 10 bad deeds. You know, none of them is bigger than the other one. So they will be treated in this way before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth. So that's all for uh, this uh, part of the, uh, what do you call the, 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 the chapter. And this is the last uh, uh, part of this, uh, this al-uqubat al-lati tataratabu ala fi'ili al-ma'asi. And and the next class, inshallah, we will be talking about some of the effects of the dhunub uh, on things. This is also very, 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 very important uh, 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 chapter in this in this book where we will see the other the effect of ma'asiyah in our life. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, al fil barri wal bahar." We'll be dealing with this ayah, an excellent mention of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in His book about the other, you know, the negative effect that we are living in. And the reason why the barakah is taken away from us in almost everything we do in this in this life. And how was it before? Ibn Qayyim will be tackling this matter, inshallah, in the next uh, class. Barakallahu fikum. Let's move to question uh, and answers. Barakallahu fikum. Thank you, Mr. Shaykh. wa rahmatullah. Is it okay if we sleep leaning on our front side? Apparently there is a hadith that is weak and so it's okay to sleep in that way. You mean on the, on the stomach? I think so. Uh, no, it's not okay. It's wrong to sleep on the stomach. Also scientifically it's unhealthy. It's wrong and also unhealthy for a person to sleep on his stomach. And it creates also other bad attitudes, you know, such as masturbation and all of these uh, uh, strange things that are taking place in the life of humankind, especially the youth from time to time. So it's not good for the, for the body and also Islamically it's not good. Mm. So Sheikh, the hadith mentions it, is it to be or is it authentic? Well, I, to my knowledge, yes, uh, but inshallah give me... Uh, uh, time to uh, check it for you. Ahdi bil hadith uh, was quite long. Uh, inshallah, I will check it. Remind me, Shafa, next class, and to check about the authenticity of the text again. Inshallah. Uh, question by Sister Noor. Sister Noor. Uh, according to the way the culture is going, this is okay. But if they mean that this is my daughter, uh, this is a lie. Uh, this is a lie. Uh, the best is to, uh, is to address them my, my sister rather than daughter. This is my sister, this is my brother. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Udu'uhum uh, li'aba'ihim huwa aqsatu inda Allah. Fa'in lam ta'alamu aba'uhum fa'ikhwanukum fi ad-dinu wa mawalikum. Call them out, brothers, my sister in Islam. Mm. So that's the best. Instead of uh, mother, uh, uh, my sister. Mm. But if she says uh, mother according to the culture, but doesn't mean that mother, mother, you know, and people understand that this is not the mother. If people understand that this is not the mother, it might be okay, inshallah. But uh, as I said, Allah says, call them ikhwan kufiddi. You know, the mother should call the daughter my sister. And she should also do the same thing. Use another name, my aunt. Use another name, my aunt. You know, something like this. Amma, <laughs> khala. In Arabic, they have this. Yami, you know. <laughs> and it's not the real uncle, but they call yam. Across 
worthwhile to talk to them to convince them to think differently. Uh, come again. If someone come across Muslims who like to argue and speak badly about scholars, is it worthwhile to talk to them to convince them to think in a different manner? Yes, definitely. You should help them and support them in that. You know, you should help them. They're in a very dangerous situation. Somebody has to sit down and be patient with them to convince them. Another question by the same street. If a person unintentionally hurt someone, should they seek apology from the person who is hurt? And if they didn't, will they contribute for hurting on the day of judgment? Yeah, if you hurt somebody, you have to ask him to forget, uh, to forgive you. Yes, you you do something wrong against somebody, you must ask them to forgive. What if this is an unintentional issue? Is it positive uh, or obligatory? Uh, things that happen unintentional also is part of their right. When they hurt because of you, although it is unintentional, you should ask them to forgive because this is their right. Even the one that happens unintentional, the thing is, between you and Allah, SWT, there will be no issue. But between them, they got hurt because of you, then there is an issue. That's why when you uh, kill uh, somebody unintentional, you have to pay the deer. Although it's unintentional, but you still have to pay the deer. Another question about the religious of Salaam alaykum, Shaykh. the person who purposefully is a person who purposefully sleeps in the manner which is Yasalah. Does he fall into the hadith that talks about women who misses a prayer due to sleeping or forget it? Or he fall into the hadith of someone who purposefully sleeps in Salah? I don't know, Abdurrahman, whether it is from me or from you, the voice is cutting. Okay. Uh, is it clear now, Sheikh? Yeah, it's very clear. The question is, uh, Brother Yusuf, Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum. Does a person who purposefully sleeps in the manner you mentioned, talk into the hadith, talk about someone who misses the prayer due to sleeping or forgetting it? Or does he fall into the category of someone who purposefully leaves the Salah? Uh, no, he has to pray again. But if he does it intentionally so that he will miss the prayer, uh, then he will be amongst those people who purposely miss the prayer. But let's say due to negligence, he just slept thinking that he might wake up, you know. But it's too risky, you know, too close to the prayer time. You know? uh, and if he keeps doing this, uh, then uh, there is a fear that he will be included among these ones. You get it? But the one uh, uh, who overslept, you know, thinking that he will be wake, uh, uh, able to wake up, but at the last minute he slept, uh, he has to make up the prayer. It will be like the, the person who overslept. Uh, he slept on time, but unfortunately it went beyond the limit. He has to make the pray make up the prayer. But for the one who intentionally sleep. You know, uh, he slept so that he will miss the prayer intentionally. He knows that that this is like somebody who neglected the prayer intentionally, who neglected the prayer intentionally. So intention governs the situation here, inshallah. Now, Michelle, a question by Thoban. Uh, this is a question on behalf of my brother. We wanted to know if there is anything wrong with the practice of companies where once the person leaves or is laid off, they give him money. For example, if the person worked 10 years in the company, he will get a salary of 10 months when he leaves. Is there anything wrong with that? I know it's okay, it's fine. They can give him the salary of uh, 20 months. That's a gift. 
inshallah that's okay be the light Allah. question by brother Yusuf Sheikh may Allah grant you goodness I came across people who say that you can lie to avoid tax they claim that it is because you can lie in a war and we are waging a war against taxes how do we correctly understand the ego and what is the correct understanding of the hadith about the permissibility of lying in the cases mentioned by the messenger of Allah first? Uh, it's not you can lie. You can only use tawriya, something that looks like a lie, when you are oppressed, to remove oppression on you. So it depends on the taxes that are collected. If it is justified by the sharia, the government do have a right to do that. And you have to pay. But if it's not justified, it doesn't have a place in sharia, then you can use tawriya to avoid it. You can use tawriya to, to avoid it. You get it? But you don't lie. Use tawriya. A word that uh, has two meanings, but the one that you're speaking to will understand uh, something, but you meant something else. Mm. That, that is the best way to apply the hadith. When uh, there is a need such as those mentioned by the Prophet wasallam, then a person can go for it. That's why they say lying is impermissible in total, except in those three places. But tawriya is only permissible when a person is oppressed. When you are oppressed and you're trying to remove oppression. Tawriya is when you speak a word, you know, it has two meanings, or more than that, and you're sure that the person you're speaking to will understand something different from what you're intending. This one you can only use it when you're oppressed to remove oppression. Other than that, you're not supposed to, to, uh, to do Tawriya because it is a lie. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The question was if an oppressed person forgives the oppressor, does this mean that the oppressor won't be punished on the day of judgment? Uh, no. uh, that's one side of the matter. He still have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody oppressed, he has the right of Allah and the right of those whom he oppressed. So he has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness. And also he has to uh, uh, also ask that person whom he oppressed to forgive him. Uh, question by Sumani. As-salamu alaykum. How do we balance between striving, striving to read a juice each day that we may do a khatam on a monthly basis but at the same time we want to memorize more? I, I prefer the increase in the memorization. Increase the memorization and try to find the time to read and revise what you are memorizing. Get advice from your sheikh to design a good strategy for you, be the light Allah, because memorization has a time. You know. So do the memorization and focus more on it and re revise the places where you memorize. Inshallah, that will be enough for you. Uh, no, inshallah, there shouldn't be any, any problem with that. It's better for you to combine. I believe we can combine. It's just a matter of time management. You can do the combination. But if there is anything to be given preference, it should be the memorization, even if you're not able to uh, read it every month. Uh, question with Brother Yusuf. Sheikh, how about what students of knowledge who call senior scholars, uh, Sheikh Al-Warid or Samahid Al-Warid? Inshallah, because everyone knows that they're not talking about father. The father, the father, the biological father. They're just talking about somebody who is, uh, I mean, uh, as a father to me, you know, in sense of guidance and love, you know. So this is already known. Inshallah, there shouldn't be any problem with that. Mm. This yeah, well, I, this one also I can't uh, remember that. Uh, that is the one that says, فَكَأَنَّمَا وُتِرَ أَهْلُهُ يعني خَسِرَ أَهْلُهُ It's if like the person, you know, lost his family uh, completely. 
Uh, that's one is correct. But lost, losing his good deed, I can't remember the, 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 the classification of the hadith. But the one that says, Wutira uh, Ahluhu, this one is, is authentic to my, to my knowledge. Mm. Question by the Tawbah. Uh, is there any dalil for doing Qiyam in Salah without folding your hands? Yeah, I mean, like this? Yeah, I think he's referring to that. Uh, there is no dalil to support not putting the hand at all. To my knowledge, yeah. from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu it cannot be supported. Mm -hmm. There is a group of people who do that, so is there any certification? There is the Maliki scholars, they said Imam Malik is to do it, but uh, people answer them. They said Imam Malik did not do it. But Imam Malik did it when he was beaten by the king and they broke his hand because of the fatwa he had given. You know, for ages our scholars used to suffer after that. Uh, so those who saw him not folding one of the hands, they thought it was okay. But that deficiency from people when uh, there's a problem of attaching yourself to other other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So there is no evidence to my knowledge from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to support it at all. And you have the, Shi the Shia who do it out of Aqeedah. The Aqeedah doesn't support this. May Allah grant us good. If the adopted child lives with the family, is it best that the child refers to the foster parents as the same thing their children refer to them as? Yes, if, if they refer according to the culture, people already know who they are. You know, and the point is in their name, they shouldn't be called Karim ibn Abdul Rahman, for instance. Cannot. But he himself, he called him Abi uh, Al Walid, you know. Uh, according to the culture, inshallah, there shouldn't be any problem with that. But we shouldn't attribute him to him and say that this is the son of this. And that's a lie. Hmm. Uh, question by Brother Yusuf. Hmm. How about placing the hands above or below the neighbor? Salah. Uh, this one also, I don't, I don't know the place to support it. The one on the chest, this is the only one I know could be supported by the Sunnah of the Prophet On the chest, no, not on the neck, and not on the stomach, not below the navel. Yeah. Okay, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of you good and success in life, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you wherever you are, إنه بكل جميل كفيل سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته